So this is now going to be a double pendulum. What I have here are two rods. They're just hinged. So I have a pin on two identical rods. Um, this rod is now going to kind of represent my arms, right? And this rod represents the club. Then the pin would be my hands, right? So if I just hold my arms rigid and let this bottom part fall, that's what I just showed you, right? That's a single pendulum with my arms holding straight down. Now, of course, though, we can do things. Our shoulders have a pivot, so I could let my arms free. If I just pinch the top rod gently in my fingers uh, and let this rod fall down, you'll see something funny happen. You'll notice energy can transfer back and forth between the two rods. You'll notice, in fact, that when the bottom rod starts to swing, it's actually going to kick the hands back naturally, right? It's going to be this natural kickback. Um, what that means is we can transfer energy in a more efficient way if we allow both of these to fall. So suppose that I start with the golf club cocked back and my shoulders raised, right? My arm raised slightly like this, and I let the entire system fall. What you'll notice is that when I get to the bottom of the fall here, that tendency of the golf club to push back on your hands is going to result in the arms coming almost to rest, and the golf club gets some extra kick as it falls, more kick than it would get from just gravity alone. So you'll see it happening that the arms slow down at the bottom of that swing and the golf club goes through more quickly than it otherwise would. That's where the extra power of the golf swing comes from, is from the arms. Now I want to point out, again, one of the most important things that physicists have emphasized about the golf swing is that my hands here are just a pin. They don't have any driving force. Right? One of the tendencies of novice golfers is to try to use your hands to whip the golf club through the hit. That's actually a mistake. The best energy transfer is going to come from allowing your hands to just guide the club as your arms are providing the force. So your arms are the force and your hands are just a guide. Okay, so how do we put all this together into the physics of a good golf swing? So what we want to do is we do want to use our muscles to drive our arms, but not to drive the club. So the way that that looks in my double pendulum model is like this. I'm going to hold my hand rigid here, and I'm just going to force the arms through the swing, right? and the bottom pendulum is going to kick out. And it, what it looks like with a club, then, is you're bringing your arms down. What you want to make sure you're doing is you're going to let your hands go. You're just going to kind of let your wrists loose and guide the club through the swing. The thing that most instructors and physicists agree on is that you don't want to release your hands. You don't want to let your wrists go until the club is about at your waist level. Right? And then you're going to allow your hands to just freely let the club swing through. And what's happening is like a whip, or like a trebuchet, if you know what those are, um, your arms are just going to cause that club to whip through. Your hands do not have to use your wrist action at all. Right? It's the force of your arms driving through the swing. Your hands are just guiding the club.